Welcome to this edition of Journals of Spiritual Discovery, brought to you by spiritualteachers.org. I'm your host, Sean Nevins. Hi, and welcome to this month's edition of Journals of Spiritual Discovery. I just wanted to read you a poem from my new book. It's called Hydroglyphics Reflections on the Sacred. And it's a collaboration between myself and Phaedra Greenwood. She did the photographs for the book. And this one is called Frost Revelation. The end begins like this. The self etched like a delicate line of frost across a clear and deep expanse pauses by the power of will and is held by grace until a tinkling bell of light robed in clearest white melts all thought and sight. What seemed a sense of lack, a darkness so compact, reveals a golden find at last. Yet, what is the source of that, he asked. The mind racks itself to explain, rises even higher to remain, and finds a dazzling dark that contains all the worlds in its reign. A blackness on high, a thundering stillness to the eye, a world of gods, another land, holding all in its hand. Yet, what is the source of that, he asks. The minute unwraps its plenitude, eternity unfurls its grasp, and serenity lets go its mask, while all that ever is or was or will be succumbs to infinity. The sense of dreaming drops, and the rhythm, the everlasting rhythm of being, stops. I hope you enjoyed that. It's a good book. I would appreciate it if you could pick up a copy of it. It's available on Amazon, of course. Again, it's called Hydroglyphics. It's not Hieroglyphics. It's Hydroglyphics. H-Y-D-R-O-G-L-Y-P-H-I-C-S. Poems about water and the depth that water brings forth in us. You can also get a copy directly from me if you just go to spiritualteachers.org, check out the menu, and you'll see my new books are there. And you can get a signed copy of that one, as well as my book, Subtraction, directly from me. It's a little cheaper that way than getting them on Amazon. But however you buy one, I would appreciate it if you would. So, this one's guest... It's actually connected to poetry. And I think that's why it sprung into my mind to read one of my poems to kick off this episode. And this one's guest is John Davis. John Davis actually passed away in 1984. So what we have this month is an interview recorded about a year before his death by an old, old TAP member from way back in the day. And this recording has been uh, exchanged amongst TAP members for many years. Uh, John Davis is also featured on spiritualteachers.org. Uh, you'll find him in the two star category, which, contrary to popular opinion, two stars doesn't mean that I don't recommend the teacher. It's just a convenient way of of sorting a rather long list of people into what I think are the possibilities that you might get from an in-depth study of their work. And really the reason that John Davis is two stars is because the only thing we know about him comes from this interview and a short article that was written again many years ago. The Tat Foundation used to publish a print journal and uh, there was an article in there which had some of John Davis's poetry in it, as well as a few facts about his life. So 
So those are the only two things that we know. Although I've heard that John Davis published a book, privately printed. I've never been able to locate a copy of it in all these years. Um, I actually wrote a screenplay about John Davis at one point. Uh, again, that's something that uh, you can find on spiritualteachers.org. If you search for John Davis, you'll find my review of him and a link to that screenplay. But really, I, I did some historical work, some digging to find out what I could, and found out very little about him. He was an attorney. He was briefly involved in politics uh, for Robert Kennedy's uh, run for president. Uh, but that's about all I know. Other than that, I do know that this interview uh, passes a quality in his words that you can just feel the depth in the guy. And then when he reads his poems and even he says, well, you know, it's not great poetry. And, and I would probably say the same thing about my poetry. It's not great poetry, but it's conveying something real, something true. And I think that you pick that up in Davis's poetry as well, especially from the way that he reads it. Uh, at the beginning of the interview, you'll even hear him say something along the lines of, you know, my goal is to someday be the greatest orator in the world. And unfortunately, he never achieved that goal, but you could tell that he was working toward it. And he understood the power of the voice and the message uh, the voice can carry, something beyond just the words. So I hope you enjoy it. Uh, there'll be a few show notes for this episode. Uh, Davis mentions a few books during his interview. And given that this is uh, many years have passed, uh, it may be a little hard to find those. So I will dig up links to all those books that I can, as well as any, anything else of interest that he mentions. And you'll find those in the show notes. So you can go to spiritualteachers.org. And go to the podcast page and you'll find a link to the John Davis interview. Hope that all has been well for all of you. And I appreciate you tuning in. I appreciate the opportunity to share something of importance with you. Stay safe out there. And uh, hopefully we will hear one another again soon. Bye. And one of the major... Uh, problems that I've had, particularly you see, as an attorney, in my speech, and, and particularly, say, at night, when I'm tired, because I, I have to constantly concentrate to keep watching in order to do it, and if I get particularly tired, that'll happen. See, one of the things I want to do is uh, I want to someday be able to be the greatest orator in the matter. I'll say, you know, I want to do that because of the fact it would be something if you knew how I spoke to begin with. You'd ask anybody, you know, even a year or so ago, even if you asked Dr. Carter, he was the psychiatrist at Western University Medical School, uh, who the, after doing psychological testing, the, the Supreme Court, their expert, used to... Uh, I determined when I was totally and permanently disabled and incapacitated. And then he was the same doctor who said, beyond a reasonable doubt, that I had recovered. You know, but at that time, he was really a man from then. Uh, my speech is good and better. But if I'm able sometimes, so that some young kid uh, is watching TV, or except, you know, and, and he doesn't know that that's a brain damaged person, that somebody was on the street. But that great, that great orator, he only wished he could be like that. And then mommy can say, what well, do you know? Yeah. And that's the way he influenced people in his world. So, then, so as I say, that's what I need to do, and it's just always good for me to be recorded, you know, to keep myself in that way. The, let me do this. Let me, if you want me to, while we're talking, you give me some introductory things. T tell me what your interest is. And, is, is this just a personal interest, or are you trying to compile some work? Or, uh, I mean, obviously, it's, it's, it's both. Yeah. 
But uh, well, are you working now specifically towards anything? Um, That's a national nice inquiry. I'm just getting some stuff out. My personal interest is that uh, that experience that you had is uh, something that, uh, to put it bluntly, I personally uh, am trying to see if it's possible for somebody like me to, to have that also. Find that. Experience to have. Yeah. And uh, also with that, uh, that type of experience is not really taken uh, creditably by either science or psychology at all. They don't, they don't even count that as being valid, as being something real. And I, it I, doesn't it is. As, no, anyway, it's as real as you can, as can be, and uh, the, the thing there's no way to validate. See, there's, there's no way that they can fit it into the systems. And as a consequence, I started to say, and then we got sidetracked coming in, is that in many ways, science, science and religion have now reversed themselves from the time that Galileo, see, he stood in Padua, and, you know, with these tall-handed, uh, educated leaders of the day, you know, he said, well, he looked, you know, he got the, he got a uh, telescope, and, uh, and he was trying, you know, he looked in it, and he saw little uh, planets at, uh, at Jupiter. Uh, and of course, if this was the center of the universe, they would, the planets would go around the Earth as Jupiter went around the Earth. But he noticed that the planets went around Jupiter. So it's not not a great observation. Well, with that, see, with that little experiment, you know, that destroyed uh, the, 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 the whole heliocentric, uh, 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 the uh, you know, geocentric uh, uh, yeah. concept. See. And then, you know, if you remember what he said, he said, well, you don't have to believe me, just get down here and look in that, look through that telescope. And now he said, well, we're not going to look through that. Right. There's a, I just got through reading a book, got to write this down, uh, because it's, it's probably the latest, best uh, book on, on what we're talking about and on, on the fact that science will not accept these things. It's called, uh, it's called Einstein's Space and Van, Van Gogh's Sky. It's by Henry Margot. He, he's the one who, who, read, who wrote the book uh, um, Scientific Nature Reality of Realm of Science. I think he's from Yale. And uh, by um, by a psychologist, a psychologist, uh, uh, Lawrence Lachane. It's yeah, just that. Okay, okay. Well, okay, see, Larry, Larry he, he got some, some books on alternate realities. Really? Are you familiar with that now? Yeah. Okay. Well, the, and Henry Margot, he wrote probably one of the best books on explaining the, the scientific uh, paradigm. And, and the book's just out. And they were talking about uh, who's the great scientist, the German scientist. Late 19th century, Hemel, Hemel's, you know, I'm to Hemel's. Right. But he was talking about this. He said that it, he, he said that he would if, that if he, uh, from some credi credible, um, once you get that, you want to let me go in there okay. and, and get you some some of these medical reports. Hemel said that if if a friend of his or a fellow scientist scientist would tell him something that would contradict locality, you know, or, you know, the accepted things, or if he saw it with his own senses, that he would not accept it. See? And, of course, this usually happens when you have a scientific paradigm or anything that's in threat. So you have to remember with the Catholic Church, it was only late, what was it, in the, in the, eight, in the 19th century, that uh, they came out with papal infallibility. Right. And you didn't, you didn't, Innocent III didn't need that. <laughs> but now that, that uh, let me tell you, the, the, that, that I gave, this was a summary report uh, given by uh, Dr. Paul Crawford, who uh, I, I got to know during this period of time. But what it is, it has a summary of all other, some of the medical um, and, and reports, and the 
EEGs, etc., all the way through. Do you know what I mean? And it will give you like that. What I'd be interested to have you talk about, too, is I read the article in the paper about you, but I'd like to hear it from you. You know, your story, what happened to you and, and the actual experience. Well, well okay, let me, I'll, I'll talk to you some about it. You know. okay. It's one of those things that uh, if you want to find the best life scene read of it, Read the uh, uh, read the uh, Black Elk Speaks. You heard that? Yeah, I've read that. Huh? College. Okay. Well, you remember, remember what Black Elk said when he said he said, saw more that night, saw more than that vision, and he'd never be able to tell. Uh, the have you seen the have you seen did you see it on the on the uh, that's that's incredible. No. Okay. I've got have you got a video cassette recorder. I'm going to be getting one shortly. Okay, if you get one, if you get one, find out uh, find out if it's a beta or a VHS. It'll be VHS. Okay, I don't want I've got a copy of both. And they did an awful good job. Both the people were uh, were of uh, a spiritual one was American Indian, the director and, uh, and one of the producers there was uh, uh, both of them were of a nature to try to catch it. They went up there got the light and you know. And there's a small team and has it right close at it. It's got the same. They're, they're going to be, I think, next May, this coming May. They went up there to shoot it. They didn't you know, get anything, didn't have a camera work. Went up there to where the site was. And uh, um, there's going to be something on PM Magazine, maybe for six minutes. Now, you don't know what the law is going to talk about there in the Because it, uh, it talks about that. See what what had happened to give you the background is that uh, I had had as you can see a progressively degenerating circumstances. I had finally during this time I had uh, lost my family, lost everything, and had uh, I had a, a friend, a doctor Edward Lewis, who hasn't been maybe the most successful. I had known him to begin with, and he would let me come up and talk to him. Yeah. I didn't charge him anything. Medical part of appreciate that. So. And so what had happened is I had had finally on my on my on my uh, birthday, July the 12th, the Supreme Court had entered an order permanently suspending my license. And I knew um, I knew they were going to because I I know I had to fight. Had an attorney, a former attorney, who had anything. And uh, uh, so and I had been arrested in jail. I'd been arrested. So I was in front of the, the judge, Judge Hay down there. While I was down there, they served me, taking my license. And I got to remember I'm then in my 40s. And, and, and that was the way. And I had fought awful hard to get my license. I had, when I was young, I, I had been born with a pretty high IQ, and I had always pretty well taken care of it. I've always read well. It was an awful blow for a long time for me to ever admit that was wrong. See, because that, that was my crutch. You know, so, you know, I always just knew that way. It was a very strong point. So. And I was a highly intellectual person. Uh, as a consequence, I was a person who, uh, uh, Mysticism is just mysticism, and it didn't make any sense. It doesn't look to uh, and, uh, and I tried to utilize, uh, I would try to intellectualize my emotions, other things. I'm, ex I'm exaggerating to limit to limited extent. Uh, and Dr. Uh, Carter, I'm sure, would tell you that. He's the type of personality I probably put up. And see, I had then lost everything. The one thing I did have. And, 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 and then I had to acknowledge it. And so uh, what happens when your license is suspended? It's suspended indefinitely, but you can once each year. Or what, not, at intervals of not less than a year, you can apply if uh, medically you, uh, your conditions change such that uh, the suspension can be lifted. My, mine was so that they said that I couldn't function, couldn't function outside the institutional setting. And I wouldn't be institutionalized. One of the things I tried to do, I was afraid 
Part of being put in jail, but primarily being a bargain. Yeah, whether that was correct, but anyway, and certainly there were times when I was paranoid, you know, and certainly there were times, uh, uh, you're probably too young to remember, but my law partner, Governor, Governor Barron, and that was the governor that uh, had the last, uh, they had the last political organization in the state, and that was the governor who went to jail, and they had him late in the 60s. When we had in West Virginia a combination of Watergate and McCarthyism, you know, the Red Bay, you know, when, you know when, when people when people were just hounded, you know, just unmerciful, unmerciful. Uh, uh, both of them were true. But uh, so anyhow, as a consequence, I went up to see the Dr. Lewis you know, you know, to talk to him, and he would treat me as a young day. Very often back then, at the time, I, I remember times I've had people, doctors, push me to the ground. You know, I had one psychiatrist push me to the floor one time. I screamed and I couldn't control myself. I'd get these seizures, but they wouldn't buy a lot of lives. You know, so I'd be in. It's unbearable for me. And I remember I was trying to get him to do what I don't know what. You know. And he pushed me to the floor, and you know, he said, You handle it, but you handle it, my name, Mom. He said, You go up high on you know, boy, you don't think you can. You know. And go up, and go up to, uh, to the Spencer. And I used to try to think that I'm not an animal. I'm animal. And, uh, and I'd had the notion, you know, you know perhaps uh, all Charleston can't be wrong. You know, and maybe I'd be a good, maybe I'd be a healthy animal or something. You know. So, anyhow, so I, I go up to see Dr. Lewis, and he was talking to me in the daytime. And I had to stand up the graveyard. And I, all my life has uh, infrequently frequented graveyard you know, because I find a place of solitude. And when I was young, I would go up there and, you know, and, and you know, that's a philosophical part. I often have uh, looked at, for somebody that's 100 years of age, you know, I just never seem to be running run into it. You know. but all my life I've done that. You know, very often I've gone up and drank that with you know, people. You know. But, uh, but it's, it's a place of solitude, and, and it's a place that doesn't bother me. Of course, by this time now, it's a place where the biggest thing I, I had concerned about is even if you're, uh, they say, a, tra a tramp or a bum, uh, technically I wouldn't be, uh, or technically somebody in my situation would have been offended by that. I, I was like what you call a scuffler. A scuffler is not a bum, but a bum's given up. A scuffler is somebody... Uh, he was the poor man's Tom Jones, you might say. When he gets up in the morning, he do not know where he's going to eat or where he's going to sleep at night. You see? He makes it through the day. So. See, of course, when you're scuffling, you're just trying to keep that, you know, your head about the water. Or you, and, you know, and you can't do much to, when you're on the street, that's one of the worst things about it. You know, anytime in a low economic situation, you've always got this pressure. You know, it's, so it's hard to, you know, you think you're going to rehabilitate and you know, all that long. And so I'd been up to see Dr. Lewis, and I told him that, uh, that my license had been suspended and that I had to you know, undertake to somehow get off myself off the streets to, you know, and to stand at home uh, and to uh, give him uh, probably brings it home just as well as anything. Oh, boy, he's And, and, and I had a, uh, I had, I still have a styrofoam rubber thing with my, I call it my home, you know, that's what I slept on. So. But that's probably better than anything else gives you. You know, those feet, those shoes were there, <laughs> and probably somebody was in there walking. <laughs> but so, uh, so I had, um, uh, I had, uh, talked to him, you know, and I wanted to know, and he finally looked at me and he said, John, said, I'm not going to kid you, because you don't have a year to live. He said, you're ready for the box. And I've never heard that phrase. That hit me. Right hard. And uh, when he said that, I started going back. I myself, I could hear that calling. Say it in a way. I am more... Men ordinarily 
men uh, and I've been uh, with, with, with not only well known men, but men, you know, but, but men that you call me in, whether they're well known or not. And a man, a woman will slowly wear out herself, but a man will go full, full stop. See, full stop, I've been in many fight with women, see, until they fall. And they fall, you know, very often if they work, or they retire, like football coach, or fair bride, you know, they die. You know, but they go and then they fall. And the very, in the fir- uh, two seconds before you see them fall, you look at them, they conquer the world, you know. And, 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 and they are, like the Frenchman said the, about the Germans, you know, in the First World War. You know, they said the Germans, you know, reached their, their extremity. The victory belongs to whoever survives the other. That was it. Well, I, I'm, I, I'm apparently not that way. You understand? I wear it like a woman. You understand? I kept, and I often thought to myself, you know, God, you'll go on forever. And I'll just be here going forever, and I'll never, I'll never stop, and you know, and never get better, you know. And, and during this period of time, so I'm going up to God, great God. During this period of time, I began to, I began to have a, in my life, I would consider myself, well, uh, atheistic to my there's ways, uh, sometimes, I used to I used to have this saying that I would ask somebody, you believe in God? You say you do, I don't. You say you don't, I do. <laughs> and I, I have begun to become aware of a force. I'm trying to put it together now. So you see, I mean, uh, over the years, it'll take me some time, you know, to, 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 uh, to be aware of a, a force in the universe uh, which I could best identify uh, with the traditional religions uh, with Islam. See, and a Muslim will understand, uh, I think this is why all the great religions in the West started in the desert. See. But there's one thing about the desert, see, you, you risk meeting God. You can't hide help but see. There's not much out there, but you and him. And I began to become very much a sense of that. Beforehand, I felt uh, as uh, the cry of a stranger and afraid in a world I never made. I didn't particularly feel that I was uh, afraid. I felt that uh, there was no sense in talking about truth and justice and beauty in these small things unless you admit the big things in life. And one of the big things in life seems to me, seemed to me that there was no personal afterlife in any sense, and that well, there wasn't any personal God in any sense. It would be put me uh, either an atheist by Christian concepts or a good Buddhist. See? Um, but but my, my feelings were that it was an alien world and that the, and that the world uh, was alien to man. Man, you know, man, man made civilization, you know, and, and, and life was, a, as uh, George Santana said uh, when he was talk, criticizing uh, Henri Bergson, you know, he said, what is this he law of my death? You know, that a few degrees temperature wouldn't remove, change in the, you know, wouldn't remove from the universe. See, so, and it's, it's, it's slowly become, to me, I used to cite it all the time. I had a memory. And what is this? It's life. It's force. Then I uh, happen to start beginning to occur to me, but it is just exactly those degrees. So uh, that's the other end of the story. And I, where I beforehand, uh, you might say, uh, and I'm again reconstructing this, not just for tonight, I'm reconstructing it in my life to understand it. So this is, that's why I think that. I think you might say as somebody as a polytheist, I was a polytheist. You understand? There wasn't, I never thought of just one alien force out there. Yeah, it was just an alien, it was, you know, it was just a Newtonian universe. See, in a Hobbesian world. Although I had, I, I had these, these ones, I felt that if, from, I used to say it this way, if um, God didn't write the Sermon on the Mountain, the Sermon on the Mountain was written. So if uh, God didn't do it, who did it? Man did it. So God's in man, you might say. 
something like uh, now the, the great uh, Greek uh, Hudson Jackers. You know, you're you familiar with him, the great Greek uh, uh, poet and uh, Golden Kazan, Degree? Hudson Jackers. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> and who, who has that concept, you know, and probably was alive as well, you know, as, you know, as, as any, uh, he was alive as well as the flame burning him as strong as it did in any bright, you know. And Zorba the Greek, you know, Zorba is one of my heroes, you know. Zorba was, actually, was an actual man, he, he was never met. You know, when he but uh, um, what you want to read is his, uh, his Odyssey, you know, the new one. Modern sequel to the Odyssey. If you want to read the big work, greatest poem in the 20th century. But uh, I, I, I had these feelings, see, but I began to get this sense, Muslim sense, as you'll notice, you'll go another, you know, you've seen it, and then I know where you know, well, you'll see this. I began to get this sense, and I think you begin to, and later I'll explain to you, is that. Uh, in this experience, what I began to have, and I might write it out for you, so you might I have to talk to you and get a feel for you and see how far I'm going to and how far I'm not, you know, and how far I'm going to. It's a sense, a sense of, a profoundly sense of other, so, of other than whatever I'm identifying my own personality with, see. And by this time, I, my personality is pretty well big thing. You see what I mean? You know, I mean, I mean, in terms of, uh, as I, I was pretty realistic on that. So you have to remember that one thing, some of the studies that they've had of depressed people, you know, they know, they noticed that uh, depressed people, of course, do not see the future as bright, as optimistic people. You know, and you'd say that is, you know, like the reason that they do not see it properly or correctly is because that they're depressed. But they found out that depressed people see the future much better. It's the optimists, see, <laughs> see who do not see it, see, and, that, and therefore survive in it, see, and pass on their genes to other people who don't see the bad future, see. <laughs> but there have been some scientific, uh, uh, and I can give you some, science, some science on that, you know, later on, some scientific studies on it. You know, I mean, very close to that, it's not, it's not just uh, something that uh, Arden Nash should come up with. <laughs> So anyhow, so what I did, I went out to the graveyard, and, I, and this, I'll get you the uh, the uh, you know, the videotapes that they, they put that thing. I don't know what they do. Put that thing out on the because I, I don't think I'll be doing that many more times. You know, but there's a specific place. But if you get the one, they just they just it was magic almost the way they taught it in the, in the that's incredible thing. So I was walking down there, it was getting late at night, and I was walking towards the older part of the uh, graveyard, towards the part of the field. I was thinking it would be very long. Yeah, I'd be buried like that. You know, and I wouldn't have to, nobody know my name. And then I had, and you have to remember, there was, there was in me, I'm sure that there isn't everybody in the Damascus sense that you've got. So, uh, the, uh, the desire to fall down there, you understand? Fall down there, hit and rise. So, and that nothing, that life isn't really validated until that happens. Uh, I can remember with my father, who, uh, and I don't want you to come and tell you this for your information, but, you know, some of these other things, and I particularly I wouldn't want you to use this. But my father ended up, my father was a very successful, self-made man uh, uh, who uh, impressed me very much in life. Uh, psychologically, you could say, you know, you could put things in on that, that's dangerous. So. Um, but he, um, uh, he always had this uh, Damascus feeling, so, until he was saved, you know, and he was a, a literal believer. In Christ, you know, one time I can remember one of the shocking things, one of the things that shocked me into atheism, you know, or polyatheism, you know, was that he once told me that, he said, well, John, there isn't any heaven, what's the sense of being good? See, it was, gives you a very good reason why he shouldn't be there, you know. I mean, give you the very best reason in the world that everybody should be in heaven. So, yeah, but see what I mean? But, but he always had this feeling that, you know, that he'd never had that experience and he wasn't saved. And I think that's also a, tr a very true thing, very true thing. Because we all young, 
So what I what I'm getting into what I what I'm what, just, what I can best equate what happened to me, and I've come at it several ways, is the traditionally been uh, been handled by the what's generally called the perennial philosophy. The the, the 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 mystical tradition, you know, which is found in all great religions. You know, there's one good rule: the orthodoxy separate, and the mystics unite. But in, but, yeah, but in, in this in this experience, you know, you, you can see the thing. But as I say, I had a profound sense, let's say, of the other. I, I had begun that I had begun to almost. This is the problem that you, you may find with the, it's partly the Christians are going through this guru thing. And I understand why the Christians are going through the guru thing, because Jesus does it for them. But finally, a man who's going to be a man finally realizes nobody else could for him. You and the big boy, I used to try to say, say me and the universe. And we're using other terms, you know, God's part of everybody. See, I'm getting to well, most people begin to accept the use of that. Uh, you know, but uh, what I was done, let me just go through and give you some of the descriptions. I was, I was walking down there, and there is a, there is an angel, big angel, six, seven, thirty feet, and a cross behind it. And now uh, we might go up there, we drive up on the way back, I'll drive up before we get through it, but uh, the gate's closed, I'm short. Uh, if things are right, you might feel something. But, um, and I thought, I walked by there, and I thought I heard the word, listen, and stop. And then, and I can show you, I then had a series of profound uh, spiritual moments. Profound. Uh, the, the important thing to understand was, but right at that moment, certainly there was a gnawing inside. I'm sure it would have been. Do you know what I mean? Uh, uh, would have been, you know, that I, you know, I wanted out of what I was in, see. But there wasn't this time. You know what I mean? This was not somebody on their knees, begging, praying. You, you've probably heard sometimes that the with uh, any time that you have the aha experience or you have a religious one, it's when you have to give up. You know, me have to give up, but even with that, you know, you might say it was that. But you know what I mean? But I had never really, I had never anticipated, it wasn't, didn't even occur to me, ever, you know, in my rational mind at all, that, you know, that anything could happen whereby I would be changed in, in, in an instant, overnight. I mean, for instance, I had, uh, I had this, I don't know what it was. Uh, it, it's difficult, you know, it's so difficult to explain psychological pain. You know, if, if, unless most uh, psychiatrists don't understand it. When they see somebody in the same, say, if they, if they stop them from crazy, they're going crazy, then they don't see anything bothering them. You know, I've seen, you, you just have to understand it. But I also had, and it had to be awa- equated to, uh, to the neurologically, because I, I, you know, I, I, I didn't have it beforehand. Yeah, but, and, and it's, uh, it's a difficult, I might maybe try to write it out, but it, it was an, in, an incapacity for the brain, I mean, for me to stop and, and concentrate on any one thing, and it's, it's like a mind is distracted, and obviously it can be, because as I say, I can, you know, I can concentrate far better than a baby can, so this baby is it's distracted some way, you know what I'm talking about? But what I'm trying to say is I had a series of experiences throughout the night. And each time, it's like a round. And they seem to be seven now, but you have to remember, this is one of the best things I should do is for somebody like you, or somebody that's willing to say, here is an ideal situation where there's quite a bit of paperwork, and you're never going to find an instance where you've got somebody by chance. That happened to be an old Newtonian physicist and doesn't believe in everything. You see what I mean? Yeah. It's not, it's not like it, though. And probably no one has ever been that far down. Yeah. It's ever come back. <laughs> yeah. And uh, probably, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, but uh, anything I never, you know, is finally, okay, finally, I remember I, I thought that if I could, if, if, uh, 
if I could, uh, I remember I also thought if I could just get back in, uh, in, uh, off the streets or something, then I could get some type of drugs or something that would control me. You know what I mean? That was the most, you know, I knew I couldn't, I knew I couldn't, uh, uh, do anything steady. I mean, if you had asked me, if you had asked me to, uh, sit here, close my, or watch, sit here, and, and uh, watch that thing go around, and they say, think of nothing, so I couldn't do it in seconds. You know, I can remember one time I tried to close my eyes, you know, whether they'd be trancing, business, meditation, you know, like 20 seconds to stay home or something. But I mean, but uh, at night, so finally got away, I could feel it, say, my brain was organized. But no, I mean, once, you know, the next day, I never, one time I almost had a seizure. I could sense it. I started growing up. You know, I was in a lot of stress one time. I thought I was going to, but, you know, but I did. I mean, never had no seizure. I, I from then, because I had many ups and downs, a long way. You know, the, uh, just like in, the, in that, uh, in that uh, last uh, article the fellow wrote, and he said, I got mad, you know, strong. I get mad at myself because I forget, you know, I don't talk plainly, except, you know, it's a long stage, you know, honestly. but I never was the same person afterwards. Once you have an experience, once you have it, it's totally authenticated. And also, I know this. I, I know you, it's a knowledge, uh, and it's it's a knowledge uh, that that you are part of the universe. That you are part. That you are part. Of the, that the universe and you are not two alien things. As, as some of the mystics says, it's a world out of which we cannot fall. See, you know. You know. Be, be not afraid of the universe. See? It's a sense of oneness. See? And also at that time, a sense of being subjected, not subjected, you know, being the, you know, in the grasp you know, of a power much larger than me, and alien to, alien to anything I can call ego. Yes. I, I, I need you to talk with me. I need words. I need words. I know what words you use, see, to get it. That's what I'm trying to do. You see, I'm, you know, we're, trying, we're talking to your nervous system. We're not talking to your cerebral hemispheres. <laughs> see, um, are you familiar with what, what, what are your poets? Or what, what are you, what are you um, I've, uh, I've quite a background in reading and study along the lines of mysticism and poets. Uh, have you ever read a book by Morris Buck called Cosmic Consciousness? Mm, right, that's excellent. Right, right, that, uh, that's one of the... the, that's one of the uh, one of the uh, first ones out, you know, now. But on the thing, that, uh, they've got things in there. The things about, remember when he says, and everything was all right, yeah. it was perfectly so, that they, that's right. I mean, there's things in there I could nod. No fear of death. And yeah, yeah, and everything's right. It's just, you see what I mean? Everything's right. Cancer, you see what I mean? Cancer, everything. The things that used to bother me. See, the thing that used to bother me was that it was the old, uh, almost, uh, the old nonsense, you know, that there is a God. He's a God of cancer. You know, maybe I ought to be on the devil's side. See? I mean, I want to strike. You know, see, I mean, I want to strike. No, but now that thing I know, so the, the, the sense of the light, you know, that, that, that's probably the chief, the chief one, the old one, my wife blinding light, I didn't have. There are some things that happened to me that I can't now see. I, 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 when I mentioned about seven experiences, I, I now have been interested. In, you know, I, I really should have done this even beforehand. You know, and I shouldn't. I shouldn't wait any longer. If I'm going to set it down. You know, but I, I want somebody to set it down and let's look it over. You know, and uh, because of the fact that we get to the point, and I don't be sure I don't know that yeah, in your own brain. But I, I can remember there are things like, um, uh, I can remember shooting up, it seems to me. I'm not sh that's shooting up like a spiral in the universe. You, you follow me? I just remember this feeling. And I, and I think it was that night in an overwhelming sense uh, uh, of the bad rap that evil has, has given. You know, 
in the list, you know. Or, or it might have been beyond the pair of opposites, beyond good and evil. But it was, it was the sense, you understand, uh, of, of the bad rap that evil has, see. The bad rap that, 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 you know, the one the left foot has against the right foot. Yeah, now that one I can't equate. See, I mean, that one I just remember, but I can't, I can't, I can't put myself in the graveyard. Remember where I was at the time. I can't absolutely tell you it happened then. You see what I mean? There's some, there, there's some things, you know, that I, that, uh, and I hesitate, you know. Now, uh, are you familiar at all? I'm going to be water. Okay. And now I'm giving you this match. And then like this thing, of it, like shooting through a spiral. See, I, 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 this is something I, I'm telling you after I say it. You know, I'd hesitate. I wouldn't tell anybody to put this in a, in a book right now. Yeah, because I don't, remember, I don't even know when that experience happened. See, uh, the, um, uh, there was a, I remember one other time when I'm, I'm shooting and get, I'm grabbing the things because I'm trying to get them. I remember one other time, like I could feel like myself was shooting like this. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Like, like uh, almost me looking, looking at myself. See. Okay. okay. Like, like, like there was a universe there, see. But there was. You understand? Okay. And there was trembling. Right? Okay. See those signs? See, but in the middle, perfectly calm. And I knew, and in that among other I knew as long as I helped the universe out. See, and, and kept the, the pair of opposites. And was able to contain ambiguity and right and wrong with no solutions. And no ultimate answers. You understand? Except the cards. See, you know, that, that everything would be all right with the world, the universe, whatever it was. See, now, not that you found them, see, as soon as, as long as you can contain, you know, as Nietzsche said, and that's, of course, the last big boy, you know, going, you know, he, you, you find all the big people, everybody's alive now, it's worthwhile, say, writers, you know, in, in all of them, there's Nietzsche someplace along the line. They may have outgrown anything. I think there's some might be ready to uh, yeah, still got a bit, yeah, maybe, let me check I'll give you, uh, we'll, get, we'll get some light brain and uh, we'll give you poem. Some of the ones, and these, po these poems I had never written before, yeah, I had liked before. Yeah. Most, many of these poems, they issue from the, the collective unconscious. I can, I'll, I'll give you the example of one of them. And I, I wrote a book, Out of Darkness, which is probably an excellent document, not just a poem set. Many of which, some of them, which I read the next morning. Yeah. Afterwards. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, so I've got one that I wrote right past. At a time I couldn't write anything. See, at, at a time I couldn't conceive of them. They just issued four. You have them here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but let, let, me, let me give you some of them, and, and when, when, I, when I say them, you can tell them. Not, they're not great poetry, but they, but they, but they grab you. Again, in the... Go ahead. <coughs> flip it over so you don't see Because I think it's pretty near the end. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. The lower depth. This is, this is, this is again, you remember, if, if, if it means anything, it shunts the cerebral hemispheres and hits the nervous system. So, yeah. This, this is the lower depth. The lower depth. I shall not go where I have been. The worst foundations fled... The lower depths of sin and guilt, the land of the living dead. There is a darkness not called night in the land of lost content. There is a stillness not called rest where the perished people went. The hawk, intrepid from his nest on the dark, imperishable hill, implacable eyes and starless skies. Stares down on the world of will. And don't ask why that you and I must to hell and then come back. God decrees just as he pleased. Make or break. Play the man. Act. 
Yeah, that changed me at a time when I, uh, I, I later, one time I was reading, I uh, became very much interested in the life of Muhammad. See, at the age of 40, you know, had his visions. Yeah. And uh, I, later, I don't think I knew this at the time. My, I remember I heard, listen, he, you know, he was right. Yeah, I've often thought that that might have been there, but I didn't listen very well. But I had read one, one of the, some of the favorite of the surahs. Those are the chapters. And one of them speaks and tells Muhammad, in the, you know, by the morning hours, by the night when it's the stillest, thy Lord has not forsaken thee, nor does he hate thee. And verily the latter portion were better for thee than the former. And verily he will give to thee. And thou shalt be content. And the former should be better than the latter. It goes on and on. And uh, they observed that this was revealed to Muhammad uh, at his uh, uh, da- darkest hour of need. And saying the former was not, the latter was not better than the former. Do you know what I mean? And then they said, but this, see, this was a revelation from beyond time. Uh, sometimes they say, I mean, these poems spoke of a man, I'll give you another one, beyond the right time. See, yeah. I remember reading my at the time of this is me, you know. Let me tell you, let me tell you one that came just a, a little later that I, I had been over to uh, um, a friend of mine's uh, place, an older woman, not a girlfriend, like a grand aunt. She'd just take me in. And uh, uh, up with me. And I was upset and nervous, and, and, I, and I thought I was going to have a seizure or something. And I... Uh, uh, and I, I didn't usually do something like this. But I said, I'm going to go over, and there was a place very close by. I was afraid I'd have a seizure. Something popped. I was terrified of that. I'd get someplace by myself. And so I went over to a bar and I ordered a drink. I'm from the coal field, so I drank straight whiskey. Shot of whiskey. And uh, she, they brought me a napkin. They brought me a napkin. And the next thing I did, I got and I wrote it, and I'll recite it to you. But you notice there's an awful lot of structure in this poem. See, and the first time I ever read this was when I read it after I'd written it. Uh, I am coming, I am coming, Father coming, though the night fall fast around. I have kept the pledge I made thee, and I now am homeward bound. Oh, you've borne me, and you've bred, bred me, and you've bid me great to see. And you cast me into darkness far below the mountain peak. Half a lifetime did I struggle with dark instruments below, with my eye upon the eagle and the place I had to go. Till at last I left the valley, climbed the mountain all alone. Where the air grows cold and thinner, where you make it on your own. To the peak and reach for heaven, which is just beyond our grasp. Then like Moses, look beyond there. See the promised land at last. And listen to the heartland, there are others who need more. Help my brother and my sister reach that far, far distant shore. Then return into the home place and let others glorify. I am coming. Father coming, I have helped a bit mankind. See, it's, just, it's not a great poetry. There's a lot of structure to it. I think how, how simple the language is. Oh, all of it. Let me give you one of Bobby Kennedy. I was probably as close to it as any, uh, certainly the Kennedys. Bobby was one time I talked to John Kennedy. And I wanted to know why he ran for president. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. What was after? Yeah, and they usually you have to know these people. I mean, you know, you get to know them as, as human beings. Yeah. And I said, "It's that honey fritz." This was the 
the yacht that they, they had, say, you know, and, and Truman had one. He says, that honey prince, you like that honey prince? You know I mean? And one time he told me, he said, just see how far he could go. <laughs> but Bobby was after the stars. Like he was his father's son, something like my father was. I always wanted my father to say, old dog Trey. Oh, well, old dog Trey, one time, you know. And he had, you know, see, you know, he, but, you know, and then finally his father, you know, I could tell you some stories. But let me give you one with him. And you can see in these, sim, in the simplicity, uh, most of them, some are not, you know, but some them like that. Oh, Bobby, brother Bobby, you are dead, and I am not. The stars have left their courses, and the land we love is not. Aeschylus and Alexander and 10,000 years to go. And you were off with the roses, and I trod on in the snow. Past hell and its foundations, past memory, guilt, regret. What drove us then drives me now. Forgive if I love you yet. This earth's just one to live on, but, Bobby, it's where we're from. Can we deny, neglect it, after what we've said and done? You do not have to answer. Now you've measured to the score. But I must face tomorrow, must do what's been done before. But you know Zen, you know, to a, a many of them, the simplicity. Yeah. As I say, and this was at a time, as I say, while there may not be great poetry, you know, if, if they talk in terms of will they move people, I know that it doesn't make any difference what the civil hemisphere is involved on the thing. Yeah. I know that they, they also gave me an insight. Yeah, I mean, I mean, how well you communicate with people, you know, whether it is to what extent at all you use a single hemisphere, you know, you shut things. Uh, there was one of the ones I think I added. This is one of the, one of the ones I wrote right at the, I added one. One stanza of this, I think, David. Hymn to Almighty God in Charleston Graveyard upon release. Hail moon, hail sun, hail sacred tree. Yeah, I'm still intoxicated. You can, you can see I'm, I didn't know what I'm close to where Buck was here. Hail moon, hail sun, hail sacred tree. The sinner now shall hold. Almighty God who healeth me, all praise to thee. All praise. For thou art one, I know, I know, as thou art there above, but many in a sheer below. Oh, yes, I know. I know it so. I give my best, I'll give my all. In faith I am assured that from this world we cannot fall. No, not at all. We cannot fall. So let me live, so let me die, a moth unto thy flame. Light unto light, to thee I fly, nor question why, to thee I fly. My burden great, my spirit free, a goal I dimly see. Almighty God, who healeth me, all praise to thee. All praise. All night long here. You wrote that? Yeah. That's that's the the uh, second stanza is the only one I didn't write. Like the next day. That's a great time, and then it petered out. Did uh, where can you get this? I, 
I get when I had read the article, it had uh, said that uh, you said you didn't get a uh, a sense of mission other than being a human being from that experience. But yet, I hear in the poems you read and all that that there's a need to probably, uh, probably, <laughs> pro probably I did get a sense of mission. Probably that's not the thing to say right now. To communicate it to the people. Yeah. I mean, uh, that comes through in what you're saying. Yeah, well, you, you see what I mean? The problem, but maybe the thing is not to say, you know, because uh, it, it's just like the the spiritual experience. You know, the, the, the beautiful thing about it is uh, it's the most pragmatic thing in the world. Try it, you know, if it doesn't work, you know, if I can't get to it, you know, you don't feel it when I say the poems. You don't have to pay attention to it. You know, and that's it. But the, the biggest, the worst thing I could do, particularly, say, with the Charleston Gazette, if you read the article, the same article, let me show you, give you an example. The same article. I was going to ask you, since that article had gone out, I don't know when you gave that to AP or whatever, but I was wondering, had you received any, uh, well, you know, like I just called you up out of nowhere. No, I didn't. Mean, look, with the Gazette, see, this, that's how much they cut it down. Yeah, yeah, they were chopped it. Well, but you have to, see, you have to remember, I was a... Uh, <laughs> I was very strong, uh, and they considered a uh, part of a very corrupt organization, and you know, and and, uh, uh, and I was a uh, an unre unrepentant. You know, I never turned state's evidence or or said that I'd done something. You know, and, and they they happened to know. They did some very naughty things, but they put it in. So, you know, even if it is on page thirteen or something. And the, the, the fellow that wrote the article called me up. He said, "John, and I believe you now. I said, what's going on with the Gazette?" Yeah. But they did. They did little things like uh, uh, the uh, and then this Dr. Carter, who would, would you know, if Dr. Lewis said something about me, you know, you'd say, "Well, John, you probably write write that." Yeah. But I think I couldn't write Dr. Carter's script, or else I would have written the one when he said that was totally and perfectly disabled. You know, <laughs> yeah. But he said in a uh, miraculous recovery. You know, and they said recovery. <laughs> But you, you, have to, you have to remember on these things, one of the big lessons I've learned in these things, if you start talking about lessons, is that there's nothing fails like success, nothing succeeds like failure. You learn with the power of options. You learn to do like like with the Chinese sometimes in, in diplomacy or something. You know, they watch for the role. They watch for the yin and the yang. See, to turn, you know, when nature is with you, see. And I, and I know this after the, this last thing came on the, uh, you know, I, the, uh, uh, I just discovered just in time, uh, in my intuition, or oh, I can wait to talk to some people, you know, uh, it's much, much more so. I can ordinarily read people pretty well, even over the phone, you know, where, it's, where the big guy to talk to. See, and, uh, and very often I have always thought beforehand maybe that I can predict things, and I still say, you know, it's, because my the experience, the experience you know, helped increase you know, that. Well, yeah, well, well, and and and, and that uh, if you notice, I still can laugh at myself very well. You know, I probably always will. You know, I probably have to take myself too seriously. Uh, uh, and you know, but but uh, other people can tell you that I can predict things or see things or know things that I can't account for. Sufficient, so even myself, I've got my girl now, um, uh, who. Um, uh, is a Capricorn. I, I, I'm a Cancer. They're the exact opposite. <laughs> but, but who is a? Uh, uh, I'm getting her right now. Things I, I say is going to happen. I think or so. Or I think there's a file. If you go up the state house, there'll be something up there I need to get. I don't know what it is. I go up there. And I can I can tell you clients now that will tell you. So it's the. Uh, I mean, I can tell you religious one with, with, with uh, it's God's witness. Yeah, that's, you see what I mean? But uh, yeah, I mean, I'm just going to see how often that. There's a lot more sense to me, but some, much of what I do is I say, well, let's get back to you know, the, the yin, the yang, you know, is the role, you understand, understand the pair of opposites, that's one of the major things, I understand that there's no such thing, and you know, there's no joy, you know, no up, but down, and the bum ran, and so this is why the god Shiva, uh, Shiva Nagarad, dancing Shiva, you seem like that, you know, the four art lines, you sure. know, yeah. uh, and he's a, he's a, uh, uh, a, uh, 
and I, I would like to, particularly for religious people. And this PM magazine, I, you know, I, you know, would hit the people. I, I wanted to just they wanted to get in a little on the spiritual aspects of it, and I, I didn't. I said that I don't know. That's what occurred to me. I didn't get into much. That I don't know whether I was brain damaged. I was hungry. You know, I was under great stress. You know, I don't know the whether or not it was caused by the fasting. You know, and then I just suddenly realized that, uh, uh, you know, it may be true. What if it isn't true? That Jesus literally died on the cross, literally descended into hell for three days, literally arose and ascended into hell. It may or may not be literally true that the Egyptians went into Egypt, fled Egypt, went down through the waters, and after the wilderness went into Cana, the resurrection and the Passover. They're celebrated on the same day. They're the birth and the death of Adonis. It was celebrated 4,000 years before the uh, Israelites ever even came along. See, what difference does it make what experience, what that experience could Call, call, how it caused that experience, or where it was, or whether I actually saw it, you know, or whether I dreamed, see, or whether I've, I've, re, whether I've reconstructed it now, or whether I'm making it up. You know, what is important that man and his soul goes in the abyss, goes in the darkness, in the death, finds something, comes out with it. See, when, when you find it, when you find that uh, doesn't make any difference what happened yesterday, or what's going to happen tomorrow, or what the world has for tomorrow. Let tomorrow take care of itself, and them that want it find it. You've got today, now, and when you live in that here and the now, a certain centering takes place. And then anything like that. That's the experience, and if you look for it, you'll find it. Or, as, as you'll soon find out, is you don't find it. God finds you. You don't search for God. God finds you find it. See? Take comfort. God said the great Pascal, take comfort. Thou would not be seeking me, hadst thou not found. You will find in the search for all your fascinations and engross yourself, I would say, with paradox, with, with the pairs of oxes. You know, I think as you do that, that's, you have to go beyond them, you know. But I feel you know, something... My experiences, as I say, was to be, uh, was an experience that, uh, that I didn't achieve, but, uh, that I didn't have thrust on me, but that phrase on, helps out. Yeah. But, it, but it's an experience, and it's an experience when I can read things from Buckle, you know, and I can say, yes, yes, I understand that. Remember, I told you, like, with the lights, all that, and that's usually, and I can't say, you see, you know, and I'd like that. That'd be a nice idea. Like, I can't see, but I didn't see. And I'm afraid, you know, I'm afraid if you'd ask me a couple of years from now, I might have seen it. <laughs> I also wonder, why don't you come back and keep this recording and see, see if I can remember <laughs> Yeah, but it's, it's, it's like the thing, remember the thing I told you about this? And the shooting through, you know. And, 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 and this is beyond words, you know, but it was, it was just something I was telling like I was shooting through a style, you know, you know, that I, the thing I would never forget, you know, was the bad rap, you know, was to vindicate evil. When you vindicate bad, I, you know, I can't, you know, to try to say it, you know, but I can't put that, I mean, I can just remember this, that I have this, when did this happen to me? You know, I can, you know, I can't, I can't, I just know that experience after I don't remember when I first remember having it, and I don't know how I could have conceivably had it. I don't know where I could have been. You know what I mean? There are things like that, you know, that I associate with the thing I told you about, the pair of options, you know. 
and much 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 of it uh, much of it are very simple little metaphors. There's something to metaphor. There's something to it. See, because it takes you know. There's, there's, there's something to metaphor as against simile, you know. There's, there's something to that it takes you to see because it points. Yeah. And remember, you know, it's a Zen say, you know. Remember, if you finish the thing, the thing will point at the moon. Don't stare at the thing. <laughs> See, see, you know, in that experience, you can, uh, as I say, I, I mean, I, I have a sense, you see what I mean? But of course, it's such an overwhelming, you have to remember, you go through something like I've been through, uh, and to the extent, and I, to the extent that I'm more so, mention to other people, you know, it'd be pretty hard for me to go back and buy me another 13 airplane. But, I mean, I, mean, I might be afraid to, you know. but, uh, but uh, you know, to buy a car, you see what I mean? But, uh, but, but, I, but to the extent that I do it, I pretty much plot my own path, you know. You know it's got to be, I, I know you have to conquer yourself, I have to get myself out, because remember when you start out, you know, particularly in Charleston, West Virginia, you see, you have to remember, here's somebody who didn't lose their license because they were clever. Lost their license because it's crazy. Brain that, you see. Well, it's pretty hard to see when you're going to get people to come back to take that. See, this is one of the things where, uh, with publicity, is sometimes, you know, like with the Gazette or something, you have to go from the outside in. See, in America, um, in America, you know, Max Weber, you know, the great German, he turned the century. He talked about the charismatic personality. You know, leadership, you know, it's the biological thing in politics. You know, the appearance. Uh, you know, they call it the charismatic person. You know, but, but, but one of the ways you do that, one of the ways you do that is uh, because of our, perhaps genetically, and I'm talking about now on social biology, uh, and our uh, primate thing. You know, attention. You know, if you get attention. The, the one thing that you're in trouble, say, with the law or something, if you can just make enough noise and get attention, if you have those capacities, you sometimes can get out of it. See? If you can do that, you know, the attention, and sometimes with myself, you know, yeah, yeah, I mean, I made partly with this, you know, get the attention, you have to watch what you do with the thing, because a pair of opposites gets you right past the job <laughs> uh, But the, uh, but, uh, you know, it's first to get myself out of the thing. Then, you know, then do something with my life. I, I have very definite things, and I know I know definitely what I would like to do. I know what a life's work I'd like to do. I know one major thing. Yeah. Uh, I've, I've things I want to do. I've already made written speeches for. <laughs> but uh, and that means you understand. And very long, one of the things I did that will help you very much. You might read get Joseph Campbell. Uh, give her uh, what's right hand's name down. He's you John Mythologist. He's the wisest man made to go in there. Uh, uh, he, he's written a hero with a thousand faces. Uh, get get that it's in the paperback book. Joseph Campbell Miss to Live By. Get that, read that. Uh, he's written the thing called The Mass of God. Think of Miss as other people's religions. Say so spirituality. And one that's one of the first things that I did when I came back. If I would tell you the unbelievable coincidences, things that now that have been uh, verified, you know, it just, just goes on and on. Sometime later, I, you know, I can tell you with the, uh, let me give you an example. Have you ever, ever heard of Gene Houston? Yeah. Huh? You yeah, know, seminars. Okay, well, you know, well, Gene's one of the big people going you know, in the world. You, you know, if you want to be 10, top 20 interesting people, I wouldn't have any questions. You'd be in and uh, let me just give you an example. Remember, let me give you this one. I went to a seminar of hers, and I told this story that I'm about to tell you. And what we did, we ce we celebrated uh, uh, the Asclepian night. You know, the God. You remember in uh, the uh, in Socrates in, in the death, Plato's death. When Socrates dies, he says, "I will cock to Asclepius." You remember? Well, that's the God of healing. He was he had been healed of life, but he, you know. But anyhow, but what they so she, we reenact these things, see, and it's you know it's revolved various ways. And one of the last things you do is you everyone dresses in white and you sleep all in the corner of the with you know in the 
hey, hey, foot to foot. Uh, and then you have a great dream, and, and they, the great God of Skeptics wishes you a healing dream, a healing, dream, healing of the part of the, of the soul, you know, of the hopes, whatever it is. And but one of the last things you do is tell miracles. So I went up and I told this story that I, you know, I'd been about, and I had finally, you know, I had thought, well, what am I going to do? You know, and one of the things, you know, what am I going to do? Because everybody told us hopeless. And see, the big thing about me, I knew brain, I knew brain cells could regenerate. And I knew that I, knew, I essentially knew how it progressively got worse. So, you know, and, 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 you see, I mean, this is my, I push it down. So, you know, and, and my thought was, even when I'm talking to the doctor, you know, it was almost like whistling in the grave, you know, I'm going to get out of here, get on my, you know, get get off the streets, get in the place, but what am I going to do? See so, what I mean? What? What's my step? How am I going to recuperate? You know, how am I going to do it? What's my plan? Yeah, I'm a very practical person. You know. So what had happened, I had this notion I'll be a healthy animal. Remember me telling you that? But so anyhow, uh, what had happened, after I had this experience, I finally got off. I got into I got into the Spring Hill Apartments, and that's Rosebury Circles. It's right adjacent up there at the Great Yard. You, we go up there, and I'll let you go by, and you'll see him. And I, and I got in the sixth floor in an apartment that was facing almost right where, almost where I could see him, you know, where I'd been. Certainly right out there, so... And so what I had done, I had the, uh, I had my, ba- my home, my cell phone rebel scene, just a few things, but somehow I had picked up and got, this is within weeks or so than after the Great Yard of Scrounge. See, so I, I, I'd have, you know, I'd look at a monster, yeah, I got off the streets, maybe within a week. Uh, and I'm up there, and I find, you know, and, and I remember coming in that night, you know, in the tears, you know, to get off the street, you know, and then he spoke that door. You know, you can you kick that out. And somehow, but I ended up with the black, black and white portable TV set that I had uh, that I had uh, uh, purchased for my wife, ex-wife, uh, some time ago. And I ended up with that there. So, of course, I remember that. So the next morning, I'm going to get up, and that's my first day. So, and whatever I'm going to do. So, okay, I hooked the thing up, and it didn't have uh, uh, HBO, but it took. Uh, the three stations, and I think it could uh, public television or something. You know, and the next morning around 6.30, turned TV on. And this was at the time, uh, I think it was CBS, and before the religious programs preempted everything. You know, early in the morning, they used to have sunrise semester. Yeah. Okay, and there was one by Hazel H- Henderson, uh, who was a futurist, uh, economist and futurist, about alternative futures. And she had as her guest Gene Houston. Gene Houston. And Gene Houston and she was to, she was to talk on um, on uh, 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 conscious raising and yeah, the way men the historic the way men have raised their conscious and changed their conscious say. Okay, and when I come on you know, I turned the thing on and she was telling the story of walking the dog with uh, with Mr. Terry. And if you're going to read and run into I'd rather let you find out what that's about. You run into her in time. You, you never want to miss going out. You want to go to, uh, she's the most powerful speaker probably in the world. You, you don't want to miss not like going to one of hers. I can show you. Uh, and go to one way. You can go for over the weekend and then for the for week. They usually have one. And then she goes maybe about 8 a.m. or 9 a.m. They go to some other place, you know, for about four or five days. That's the big mess of the workshop. And it's in one of these, see. Right. And, uh, and so she's on, you know, and I start watching. And as I'm telling her, I said to him, she said, I said, I know, she said, you are, and I'm telling the story, you know, with my gown on, you know, escaping it. And I said, well, I'm sure that, uh, I'm sure that I didn't say it right, but it seemed to me like you started weaving your hair, and your hair started flowing like a banshee, you know, you remember that, you know, backwards and forwards, you know. And I said, and you said, you said that throughout the ages, man, in order to change his conscience and change himself, you know, and heal himself, have done many things. They have spun, and they have danced, they have held their breath until they can't stand it. See, and they've gone on and on, you know, and you know, and this would all vindicate. What well, essentially, remember when I told you when I said I'll be a healthy animal, what I should do, you know, and I started off on that. With her, I would go and I would before I could read, and I would get rocks. I would spin certain ways, 
stop, get a rock, look down, and, and remember the infinite amount of directions of rock, rocks, you know, in formations of nature. I would read from them the barks of trees. That's this is the way. This is what what, what I did. Yeah, I can literally tell you. You, you can see why I hesitate. You know, to certain extent. You know, and I told her. I said, I know that didn't really happen that way. You know, but I want to tell you that, that because of that, and I'm now here. You know, this is my story to her. You know, I finished it. Well, that thing was on tape. You know, at the time, it's still on tape. And of course, this doesn't really mean that much, but maybe it does. And she said, Well, let me tell you the rest of that story. She journalist, you know, you know, as you think, you know, so shall she be. And and the print media, you know, is telling the story bad, you know, all they're all telling the story bad. The print media cannot inherently yeah. you know, Because the print media has to tell the word. You know, and as Thomas Mann says, the word to kill. The word to kill. You understand? And you have to put the healing you shoot there is true. You know, because if you're, going to just, if you're going to talk about something, you've got to distinguish it. And you distinguish it by telling what's wrong with it. You know, pretty well. Mo mo most descriptions, you know. And uh, Thomas Mann, if you want to be a great journalist, a great writer, you know, you shoot the air truth, but you put the bomb of compassion. And the bomb of compassion takes a lot of maturity. Yeah. But as I say, the word just has to do that. I think this is why always the French, the, uh, the, the French people can never take it where the story of good can come you know, from TV. That's what it's going to do. And we have to have it now because the world is, we know as much what we think it is. You know, and, and the old Kuwait that began to find out that very much is true. Every day and every way I'm getting either better and better or, or worse and worse. You know, that much happens. You know, that's far too, you know, that far too much now psychologically. <laughs> But, and, you know, and, and, and we're getting that business. And the word is to Jane. See, she began to realize, you know, there's old hag of it, so she can show, so she can show the miracles. So what? Well, anybody can do that. So she's got to get out and tell the story of good, not to the true believer. But to the infidels. She's got to spread into work. See, I think she, I think, yeah, I think this thing about me, the TV, will have some effect on it. It's got to. It's the big reason. Why I, I mean, if you want to do it, why I want to get the voice. When, you know, when I say I want to be the greatest orator, that that's really even at the word. You know, I want to be able to do it, get it across. And I know I can pretty well. I I, I know you have to. I know you, your voice has to have very much rest of the center. I know it's something connected with that. I know unless you're doing that, you can't get across to. And if, it, and if there's a certain resonance, you know, and if you begin to train the person in a vibratory thing in there, you can begin to communicate. And then when you listen to that, uh, uh, when you listen to the, uh, uh, what we've talked about, it won't make any sense. You know, and you say, well, that was fascinating. See, but one thing you can start doing, turn it over to where I started saying the poetry, where it trains you, see. And then, and then it'll pick up again. I know, I know, you know, there's some keys that I discovered. I know that I have to do. I know that I'm going to begin to see, see him there. Yeah. And I think he may, he may be, uh, and, and, and this monk's concept, see, was great. And many people felt that uh, at, that, at that time, St. Francis of Sisi was the new man. No, not the way we think of him, see. See, you have to remember, St. Francis of Assisi was almost the last, see, of the Europeans who attempted to work the thing out within the system. See, when it was Luther and them, you're tearing the whole thing down. See, over Galileo. See, everything, you know, beginning to tear the whole structure down. St. Francis of Assisi tried to rebuild Mother Church. Remember when he was in there and said, rebuild this church, and he thought it was his local church and he had to build that. See? But you had that. I think very often, though, that, uh, that, that that age has come upon us now. I'm going to get back to what we said on the, on the, you know, the Aquarian age. If you remember, the Pisces are two fishes. You know, the Christians accept this, good and evil. You know, bad and evil. You know, uh, let me have that before. 
And, uh, you know, now the Aquarian ages, if you think about the Aquarian ages, which is hailed by, by uh, Pegasus, you know, the wing, that's, that hails the Aquarius age. And if you remember, the Aquarius is the water bear. And if you remember, the water bear is what we think of the unconscious or beyond good and evil. And you see the bombs. You see, each, each of these things, see, they have symbols. They tell us on the thing. And when I said the thing about the bad rap, uh, another word, a stronger thing uh, that didn't feel the, was the affirmation of evil. That's a, a stronger. It came. You, if you hear that, the, the, this is full of symbols. Full of, you know, going to get messages for me, sir. And, and uh, when you read the, if you read this, the more you read it, and remember, this, much of this came from the collective unconscious. So you know, you you, you can learn as much as I can from it. You know, it's it's called uh, uh, a fell. I got no stuff there. It's uh, the old Greek for the unknown God, taking the same Paul, you know, came and saw the unknown God. Be reading the Greek. Okay, now. I am this. I am the. I like this. Listen to the tone, the beat of this. I am the voice of the symbol. Listen, all you who would know. Parsifal, Merlin, and Putin. Wandering Jew and Negro, of the old king who was suffering, wounded, powerless to die, of the stone grave where the heroes meet to plan ventures on high, aged old child of the mother, cleft spring where madmen must drink, lo, heed the voice of the symbol, listen. Don't ask and don't think. Now ends the age of the fishes, darkness at war with the night light. Pegasus brings water bearer, ridden by El Kidder, the black knight. Kidder, the loner, the stranger, Gog and Magog he'll defeat. There on the plains, Armageddon. Comforter, self, you will meet. Conscious, redeemed by unconscious, left side of brain by the right, secret of the golden flower, marriage of day with the night. War not for me and a beat man, damn not another man's sin, seek not for me in the heaven. I'm the still small voice within. That's one that I, I didn't hardly write, did I? This, the service to growl. He who would work, he who would read my works, know me entire. Are you beyond guilt, regret, and desire? Resolve to do whatever God may require. He who is near to me is near the fire. Pursuing true self higher and higher, your life to stand as truth and dim the fire, to be the people's great simplifier. He who is near to me is near the fire. Being your own judge and crucifier, endless inner trier by that judge of ire, pain for mortal things, your purifier. He who is near to me is near the fire. No charted ways, no rest, no time to tire, alone, Always alone, your quest transpire, your death alone, your life sanctifier. He who is near to me is near the fire. Good. You sense the thing. I, I have no doubt that when I think of myself often now, I think of myself 
very much as, le as a leaf. And we're all leaves on a tree. And that, uh, uh, not that men did not come down from heaven, you know, you know that the human beings uh, sprung from the earth with a bouquet of the earth, with the leaves on the tree. I, I sense that, uh, that the things I want to do you know, when I'm here and I, uh, are not a sense of, when you talk about power. See, power is wanting to do something, be something. I want to see things done. See? And I think maybe I can see things. I think maybe another person, you know, do I, does anyone know to do that done? But what I want to see is to see it done. You know, things in my life I want to do. Things in the li in the life to do. See, it's it's I, I don't have that sense of power to it. Before I, and I don't get blinded so much. I, I'm I'm very conscious uh, with myself. You know the role of things. You know, uh, to watch it, uh, you can ask uh, some of the people that that, that know me uh, better now. You know they say that it's. It's when John's got everything coming up rows and that's when I get scared. I start looking. I start nosing for the rows. So. It's, 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 it's a good thing to do. So. You know, and when things are bad and dark as I know it's so uh, it's common, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> this is why they say and, and there's 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 about a twenty page introduction in there that, that, that hadn't been corrected because what it was written partly by by a um, a Muslim friend of mine. Uh, who died and it was added on to you, you can see it okay, yeah. but there's some good insights in there but they mentioned one thing that this is why I'm probably the only person I know that planned the impossible planned, planned to do it based my life on it uh, I've got a saying that in the long run only the impossible happens not the impossible you know, can happen you can make it it's the only thing that does happen uh, you go ahead uh, you go up to, to uh, West Virginia University Library, read the, the World's or the National Experts Time magazine for the last 40 years. Compare that to the, the real world. And I plan that, see, because I know that each step along my life, see, had I stopped, and I had been an expert for one time, see what I'm saying? And if I had made my decision, as the experts would, there was no possible chance of doing it, no conceivable chance. But I know that each victory, see, each victory or each defeat changes reality. Uh, I know now that, uh, that see, uh, there's a curious thing about the human will that's maybe unique in nature. When I will the impossible, or I, re I will the ideal, or I re will unreality, what are you going to call it? very paradoxical thing occurs. I am in reality willing something, aren't I? That's true. Yet what I'm really isn't there. Yeah. I've got some clue to my mind, and I haven't thought this to her, see, that that, is, that somehow is a shunt between the two. Because once you do that, each victory you have, you know, or it isn't do that, like, it's when you sense, you know, and you get on the road, you know, it's, each one changes reality. See? And I know in each step, and then you take another step, and another, and another, you know, and it's always one leap backwards, you know, to leap forward. You know, two steps up, one backward, or one backward, two steps forward. The old la uh, classical ways that you make a stunt backwards. Everybody, Jesus went into the wilderness, Paul did, you know, everybody goes, you know, to do anything. That's the nemesis of creativity is what Torin been called it. In history, you always do it. Doesn't mean just because you didn't. You know, you're going to be a great man. Uh, I was born the same day that Julius Caesar was. But just now, because that I have bribed ward leaders, seduced women, and written poetry, doesn't mean I'll be <laughs> Julius Caesar. <so. laughs> But, but apparently it's that way, you see what I mean? And that's where you get, you know. But of course, people like myself, I also know this, that I, I don't have any doubt that trouble's coming, you might say. You know, that we're in a hazardistic world. As, as, one, as one scientific paradigm falls, another rises. As one uh, establishment class falls. You know, the big things about the 60s, you know, that, that, that the young people learn is that the lion don't have any teeth. 
<laughs> See? Yeah. And so there's, you know, there's one falling, you know, it's soaked, and there's a new one rising, you know. It is that, uh, is, as I say, is that I'm sure, you know, I'm, I'm just sure of that, you know, and I, and I, and I, and I, and I sense the thing, you know. And, but, I, but I sense it, and when I say I sense the thing, I, you can discover it as well as I can. See, I, I know that, uh, that the history, that reality always leaves the experts far behind. I know that, see, so I'll take that step. And do it, see. You could do it just as well as I can, but it won't happen, you know, it's impossible. See the difference? There's nothing I've invented, anything I'm talking about, everything I've discovered, you know. And it's just about like when you said uh, um, uh, that uh, uh, Columbus discovered, you know, the new world, well, the new world had been there, you know. Who you know? The, the people that were in the New World, you know, it, it didn't need to discover it. It was there for anybody to find it. Anybody who wants to go there can go there, and they do it all the time. And that's probably the important thing, you know. Some of the things was me. I think that's the importance of telling, you know, the story. That's the importance of something, making something out of my life. Or going in that direction, or trying to embody what I'm saying. And it's much, much more difficult to, to make a buck. You know, in, in the short run, you know, when, when there's things you will not do, see, but because of the very reason I just will not do it, I'd be sometimes maybe terrified to, you know, but there's just some things I could not do, you know, and uh, and I destroy myself, too. Yeah, I know this, so, uh, it's, you know, and I have to evolve, I mean, sometimes, you know, I, that's why I can help out a lot. I can save a lot of people a lot of extra steps. And you can try them because it's ever works for you. It works, you know. It doesn't, but I, as I've seen that, I get people, you know. And very often what they do, uh, they will, uh, um, uh, they want to be close to them. You know, tend to do it. Well, they can do it as well as I can. Remember that advertisement for somebody from Maxwell House Coffee or somebody in Folgers Coffee? And she said, well, you can do it as well as I can. <laughs> but people don't want to do it. I think that's what heroes are. Uh, people feel as though they have something that they want, you know, and that they can identify with them. That's why we sometimes identify with them, you know. But, you know, whatever it is, you know, uh, what, uh, I, I'm well aware of, you know, I'm well aware of the of the things that we're talking about. You know, I didn't invent, you know, it's one of the b better things about using the old myths and symbols. See, it keeps yourself from getting wrapped up and thinking you thought this out. See, see what I mean? Well, that exists for you. Uh, a man, uh, if I was your age, I would have, I'd carry two coins in my pocket. I'd carry one in my right hand, I'd carry a coin that says, the world, the universe made it for me and me alone, and that is true. It is. And then nobody is. It's waiting just for you. I'm serious. And I'd carry another, it says, I'm with dust and ashes. And that's true. It's a strange irony of life. You know, there's a there's a Indian uh, story, and it talks about a magician. I won't get into it now. It's a, it's a tremendous story. Sometime remind me, I'll tell you about it. But the magician's name is Terra Joy. And I thought, what a name for life. See, and there's this joy, pure joy that's just there, see. And there's this stark terror, you know, I can right now, right in the midst of, you know, catching something, having something, you know, that I know is what I can look at people's eyes, you know, get cancer and die hideously, as I think is a waste. And it's both there. Could be gnawing inside of me right now, maybe doing it, you know. Maybe causing the flirtance, you know, death. That's my, my, I might be the, the bright flame, you know, if you like a, uh, if you like a, 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 a ball put an extra light it up you will notice it fights and when it reaches it and reaches its height that's the next sign when it goes down watch that with the flame so you know there's this strange end of life we don't understand it, you know. but again it's the paradox you know if you can keep anything handy with yourself you know, if you can keep that uh, this is why acquainting yourself with symbolism see as you see as I did I got myself in you know this thing like Joseph Campbell, but don't try to read it like Bull French. See what I mean? Try to get this is a Campbell, somebody that understands. So read those things and, be, and and do this and remember that the supreme, the supreme 
arbiter, the judge is your own soul's opinion. Always. You've got each it's got to leave, you know, enter the dark forest, you know, thinking it would be a disgrace to enter the groups. You know, see, what I'm saying, you know, take, take those things, and then not spread up with your egos, you know, about this or that, and go with it. See. Get you some good metaphors. See, this is what I did, you know, and, and go with it. See. Now, don't split those many hairs along the way. You know, remember the thing, you know, I mean, why is that? Creativity, you know, to create a human being, to create life. Why is it the egg that lays in one's sperm? Why does it lay as many as it can, get as many controversies, as many genes? And when you're doing this, you understand, get yourself a broad consensus. Do you know what I mean? Stay there. And move. Proceed. Follow your fascinations, you know, and go. And, and remember what I said, if, to the extent that you can, like with your eyes, I often think that when you're truly meditating, it's when your eyes listen. Try to remember that, to, to listen. To remember in that one phrase, uh, listen, stop and see. Listen, don't think. The, the rooftop chatter. Probably doesn't mean much. I'm very often. I'll get to the point now, you know, I can get uh, depressed or, you know, I can look, you know, and rationally I can look at something and I know what I do, I just stop. And I know my brain, you know, I know what would happen and I go out and I work out, I run, do yoga. See, that's another thing you want to learn. I can see from, uh, from uh, Gene Houston, if we're going to live, Next century, you understand? If we're going to go in the Aquarian age, what we want to do, see, if we want to learn to be able to utilize the other 85% of that brain, that personality, and a basic thing to do, do not think of the brain there. Think of this as the brain. You know, think of this, see, as a center of force where the universe comes in. See, th th think, of, uh, think of DNA. What does DNA do? DNA is a pattern, isn't it? It's a pattern, and we, we think about the organic life, but what it does, it's a pattern, see, that somehow makes other, somehow makes other uh, organisms uh, dig uh, lime someplace, see, dig ore, makes these other organisms dig this other inorganic matter and it pushes them together and turns out products, doesn't it? And the DNA is just as inorganic as it is organic. Yeah, isn't it? See? And think, and think of yourself as that. Think of yourself almost as a center of force, see? And if you think of it as a center of force, center of force, all the center of force is and get your uh, your uh, Einsteinian uh, uh, physicist to tell you, center of force is a force only because of everything around. And that's somehow what the psyche is. See. And, what, and, and what you do, what you tune into, I feel certain that, say, telepathy is not so much me reading your mind as one mind, read, as a mind having a thought. See the difference? Some ways. Same, same mind. It's the same thought. mind and the same thought. See, and I suspicion very much, see, it's the same mind that's had the thoughts over and over again, takes on clothes, you know, as the, as the talk is, puts on bodies, as, you know, as Brahma puts on bodies and throws off bodies. The same thought. This is why you can have the same idea, see, as... As, uh, and this is where um, Arabindo, you know, is correct when he talk, you know, when we think of the world, see, as, as inorganic matter, you know, is now finally beginning to be conscious of itself. See, one time I was running, and uh, since I had moved in there by the graveyard, see, I had fixed up, it's almost a two-mile drive. And I was running there one time, and I was going up the grade, and I suddenly, 
I was aware of the fact that I am the present state of the universe. Right there, running, see. I am the universe. Everything's in me. See, it changes everything. See, it's, it's the hologram. And I suddenly realized that. And, I'm, and, I'm, and I'm, I am the universe right now. You know, everything that's ever happened. As I began to, um, I had, you know, forgotten or didn't know anything. I, I didn't even know they went to the moon. It's almost unbelievable to think I went through that. See, that was one of the lowest points. I didn't know they'd gotten the moon. I remember one time seeing a picture. It must have been on, on the front of Time or Newsweek. It must have been, you know, those just very distinct pictures. I remember looking at that and saying, was that a mock-up? You know, but it never occurred to me. You know, and remember, I mean, I missed the greatest thing in the history of the world, the history of the universe, by at least this corner of the universe. Uh, uh, but, uh, you know, when I started studying, I was just mad for knowledge. And I began to realize that, you know, to make me, you know, the, 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 the higher elements, you know, that you had to have a supernova, it had to be, you know, the engine, and I began to realize how one part of the universe brings other parts in. You know, that's the big DNA out there. Yeah. You see, that's the laws of the universe, you know, that Einstein that began. That's just another DNA, you know. And begin to realize that, put that together, see. And when you do, when you do that, everything becomes a metaphor. And, and you stop and say, who? What means I? And you, and you can do that. Well, what does it mean to say I, not me, or it? And what am I? What would I want? To, what would I want to uh, be eternal, immortal? Uh, I'd like to see the things done. I want to. I don't want to. I want to be sure that's done. That's got to be done. You know, as I more and more see that, and I more and more sense that 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 also is a, a strong sense I have that the concept, the spiritual concept of being made in the image of God, created in the image of God, or the spiritual man, is the man that survives. His survival of the fittest. So you have to remember, I am a survivor. How would I come out with all these spiritual notions unless they worked, and worked a lot better, you know, uh, uh, than the Hobbesian world that I was down in, you know, and remember my poem. Don't ask why that you and I must to hell and then come back. God decrees just as he please. Make or break. Play the man. Act. And why do I grab on to these spiritual things? Well, I, sometimes I'm terrified if I don't. They must inherently be powerful things. And see, and what we always have to do, you know, all these times, we, we, we have to take intellect and experience and brains as far as we can go with them, see. And when they cease, to cease we must, see. We have to reach on the broader powers of intuition, you know, the great wisdom of the race. See. And if we've, if we've hit it right, you know, we will survive. What's worth is we'll survive. And if we betray it, and I think you know, this is this is when we do become egoistic, and then we we betray a deeper self and a deep truth. This is why, as I say, things that happen that happened to me that times terrify me. And my, you know, I know it's for real. I know it's so. What do you do with it? You take a chance sometime when you're real tired, late at night, you've been in a trial since 10 o'clock, somebody calls you up and you go to the wrong... <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> okay, we better go. <laughs> Thank you for listening to this edition of Journals of Spiritual Discovery. I'm your host, Sean Nevins. For more information about today's guest, as well as more interviews, books, and other resources, go to spiritualteachers.org. That's spiritualteachers.org.